Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this episode of Metaphysical Moments, I will be reading from Neville Goddard's Five Lessons, from Lesson 2 actually, which is Assumptions Harden Into Fact. And just to mention that you can read all of the lessons free online. I personally recommend owning the book, but it's the same information. So I'll be reading a short passage about failure and how to avoid it, which actually implies that if you're able to understand this, you will in fact secure your success. Then I'll mention two or three of the phenomena Neville tells us are a mark of success. I'll read the passages and then make a comment. But first of all, I have to thank you all for supporting the channel. Thank you to every subscriber. If you haven't subscribed, please do consider doing so. It makes a huge difference. I'm enjoying the engagement. I love every like, share, comment, question you name it. I'm really enjoying connecting with you on this platform. So thank you, everyone. In thinking about making this recording, I felt that it would help to ensure that while we're focusing on techniques and methods and positive outcomes, we're talking about anything with the potential to scupper our chances of success. I'm aware of the frustration. I've experienced it myself firsthand back in the day, that feeling that you're the only one in the room not seeing results. And I, at one point I was really honed in on this. I wanted to eliminate any obstacle because I didn't want to just be the cheerleader to grin and bear it and be celebrating other people's successes. I wanted successes of my own. I wanted to reap the rewards that Neville promised. So I really feel that these types of reminders, addressing these types of issues is as useful as it is important. So this is what Neville says about failure to produce the results you're looking for. He says, if there is one reason in this whole vast world why people fail, it is because they are unaware of a law known to psychologists today as the law of reverse effect. When you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, it is with a minimum of effort. You must control the direction of the movements of your attention but you must do it with the least effort. If there is effort in the control and you are compelling it in a certain way, you are not going to get the results. You will get the opposite results, whatever they may be. That is why we insist on establishing the basis of the Bible as Adam slept. That is the first creative act and there is no record where he was ever awakened from this profound sleep. While he sleeps, creation stops. You change your future best when you are in control of your thoughts while in a state akin to sleep. For then, effort is reduced to its minimum. Your attention seems to completely relax and then you must practice holding your attention within that feeling without using force and without using effort. Do not think for a moment that it is willpower that does it. So that's the end of the first passage. So to be clear, the law of reverse effort means that the more effort you use to control your mental activity during your prayer, the lower your chance of success is. While the more relaxed you are, the more participatory and amenable you are, the greater the likelihood of your success. I go so far as to say you're guaranteeing your success. And to give you a tip, when you're in the mental scene during your metaphysical prayer, it's actually your feelings that cause the image or the action you're doing, you're performing to change. It's your feelings that control what's happening rather than an effort of will and you sort of trying to make yourself think or do things. If you are happy or excited or feeling courageous, for example, the image will reflect this rather than you attempting to make yourself do things that reflect that. I hope that makes sense and that's, and that's clear. But as I say, you can submit questions below. And the reason for this, the reason that it's feelings that are doing this is because the feelings we experience during prayer are transmissions. So we're not supposed to resist them, but instead experience them by consent. So the feelings you experience while you're in metaphysical prayer are actually changing what you're seeing when you look into your mental image. This is a transmission to you of what's coming and the experience without resistance is your consent. So that's what's going on. Okay, so moving on. 
Neville also in the same lesson talks about some of the phenomena you'll experience, which is super helpful in helping us to know that we're on the right track. If we also know about other phenomena, like feelings of being spent, that's fine. But here is what he says about the most common phenomena that indicate to you that you have prayed successfully. He says, first of all, if your hands are dry and if your mouth is dry at the end of this meditation, that is positive proof that you did succeed in fully integrating with the transmission. I've reworded it a little to make it clearer, but that's exactly what he's saying. He talks about lifting the cloud, but you'd have to read the whole lesson to understand what he means by lifting the cloud. But if you um, have a dry mouth and you have dry hands at the end of it, then you have succeeded in integrating, received the transmission without interruption. He also says, I'll give you another phenomena, which is very strange and one I cannot analyze. It happens if you really go into the deep, you will find on waking that you have the most active pair of kidneys in the world. I have discussed it with doctors and they cannot explain it. In my experience, that has felt like a twitching in the lower back, in the uh, area where your kidneys are located. You may only have one kidney. Um, but in that area where your kidneys are, you'll feel a palpable twitching. It's kind of, it's pretty odd, but it's unmistakable. You'll know exactly what I mean. It's kind of like a, not, it's not spasming, but it's, it's really a, a clear twitching feeling. Another thing Neville says that you may observe in meditation is a lovely liquid blue light. The nearest thing on earth to which I can compare it is burning alcohol. You know when you put alcohol on the plum pudding at Christmas time and set it aflame, the lovely liquid blue flame that envelops the pudding until you blow it out. That's what he's talking about. That flame is the nearest thing to the blue light which comes on the forehead of a man or a person in meditation. Do not be distressed. You will know it when you see it. It is like two shades of blue, a darker and a lighter blue in constant motion, just like burning alcohol, which is unlike the constant flame of a gas jet. This flame is alive, just as spirit would be alive. So when you're successful in, in prayer, that's what you're going to see. Another thing that may come to you, as it did to me, says Neville, you will see spots before your eyes. They are not liver spots, as some people will tell you, who know nothing about it. These are little things that float in space, like a mesh, little circles all tied together. They start with a single cell and come in groups in different geometrical patterns like worms, like trailers, and they float all over your face. When you close your eyes, you still see them proving that they are not from without, they are from within. You may also see things that look a little bit like blood cells. I think I've read that somewhere in Neville, but yes, these are sorts of phenomena that you will experience. And the reason why I'm throwing in little additions there is because you may experience something similar to what Neville's describing. So don't worry, as long as you're seeing those kinds of images, then you're on the right track. Neville says, when you begin to expand in consciousness, all these things come. Talking about the circles and things in front of your eyes, he says, they may be your bloodstream objectified by some strange trick of human that human does not quite understand. I'm not denying that it is your bloodstream made visible, but do not be distressed by thinking it is liver spots or some other silly thing that people will tell you. If these various phenomena come to you, do not think that you are doing something wrong. It is the normal, natural expansion that comes to all who succeed in this practice. So there you have it. Reverse effort is crucial to your success. It indicates that you have surrendered to what is happening and recognize the process to be a realignment with the new expression of life that you're looking, looking for rather than a transaction. And we can take phenomena such as dry mouth, dry hands, the things you see in front of your eyes, the liquid light, the twitching kidneys and all of that as positive proof that we've met the physical requirements for success. So thank you so much for listening. Please submit any questions you have about this uh, below, about this upload. You can submit those below or contact me via my website if you have unrelated questions and I'll provide a link in the description box below. I look forward to being with you next time. Until then, stay phenomenally you.